Let's turn to another subject. Oh, and somehow gearing. I don't think we're going to get a, We're not going to get agreement on this one either. That's okay. That's negative support. gearing. Now, I know essentially you two will come from different camps here. Okay, yeah. Jason. The federal government's saying they're not looking at it. Yeah. Should they? We've had the New South Wales Planning Minister, yeah. obviously the Coalition Minister, saying yeah. it needs to be looked at. Mm. Yeah. Okay. The justification for doing that, do you believe he was right? Does the federal government need to look at this again? No, it doesn't. David and I have had this argument on your segment plenty of times. It's good that we've resolved that smashed avocados are not responsible for housing affordability in Sydney. But the fact is that if you get rid of negative gearing, you will do a couple of things. You will drive up rents. You will also drive down investment in to the property sector, thereby reducing supply, which will then increase the price of housing. So people who are, who are younger, who are renting their apartments at the moment, will see their rents go, who are trying to save for a house, will see their rents go up, thereby inhibiting their ability to save for deposits, and they will see the price of the house that they're trying to buy go up as well. So it would have a negative effect. What, what Rob Stokes or Dr Stokes said this week was basically there are a whole bunch of levers that people need to look at. Supplies, one of them. Stamp duties, another. Um, affordable housing ratios is a third. There's a whole bunch. And he is probably the best planning... Well, no, he is the best planning minister in Australia mm. at the moment. He's very thoughtful on this issue and there's a whole bunch of things that need to be looked at. Well, I've got to say, he's got his head around the planning portfolio. Um, you call him Dr Stokes. I'm happy to give him authority in this case. Um, <laughs> he and he has realised he's been having a look at what's been happening in Sydney. We had record supply coming on over the last three or four years. Not just housing starts, but completions and apartments. Record, record numbers. And what have we seen in housing prices? We've seen housing prices continue to rise and rise and rise. And all that Rob Stokes has done is acknowledge reality. You can't fix Sydney's and Australia's housing affordability issue just on supply. You need to look at those other levers that are driving an unreasonable amount of investment into that. What and the key one is negative the gearing. Being interest rates. Well, very low interest rates, but also negative gearing. People are willing to buy properties and lose money on it, pay, pay, pay more in interest than they get in rent because they're hoping to make a capital gain down the track. And we have a bunch of houses in Sydney that are literally empty because landlords have bought them regardless of the rent. They've bought them on a speculation that um, prices will rise, and if they lose a bit of money in the meantime because they're not getting rent, they don't care because they're banking on a capital gain, they're banking on negative tax gearing, uh, negative gearing to, to, to give them a tax incentive. If we don't fix that, we're going to continue to be channelling unt untold amounts of capital into the Sydney market and pricing out first home buyers. So what that's, what, that's, what, that's what he said. Sorry. It's right. So what David... He didn't say that. And what David is saying is completely wrong. So even taking not, his own... Not just a little even, bit wrong, even, no, no, completely wrong. absolutely wrong. wrong. And, <laughs> and, you know, I have to say, thank God we've got to that point. <laughs> but the fact is that what you have is that... Um, what David just said is, is that you have people charging rents... That don't do, that don't cover costs. So you no, get they don't rid care, of because they've got negative gearing. And that's fine. And that's fine. So they're going to make a big get rid of gain. Ne if you get rid of negative gearing, people will have to increase their rents so that their rents do cover costs, and you will have less people well, investing in the well, market. Well, Jason, that's one and solution. Other point, the, the other but, thing would be uh, prices go down. Prices go down, and if prices, Sorry, how go, how prices down, go down, because people are no longer people are no longer willing to pay. Uh, the same amount of money because the return is going down. Not no, everybody no, no, but, wants the negative but, gear, but, David, but some people want to get a return out of property. <laughs> if 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 um, David, if, no, if we get rid no, of no, negative gearing, we're people going to be pulling no. the, pulling the heat out of the market. No, David, that's not what happens. People that, stop so. investing in the market, so people stop building houses, but, and so supply goes down. And we come back down. to this argument so this that it's like, like, it's like the market for bananas. It's not like the market for bananas. It's not just supply and demand. There is a massive, massive market here in Sydney, hugely over overcapitalised, primarily because of the major tax breaks. Negative gearing while you lose money holding it, and a big capital gains benefit when you sell. But of course the other problem is that <clears> you're talking about different markets. The, mm. You guys are being very New South Wales focused because of the heat in the Sydney market, certainly Melbourne, Brisbane, but you've got other markets such as Perth, yeah. which has fallen. And that's the other argument that Scott Morrison's been making against David's argument, which is 
these macroeconomic policies are Australia-wide. So if you get rid of negative gearing, yes, sure, it has an impact. Of course, the Sydney property market just isn't one market. Same in Brisbane, same in Melbourne, a whole bunch of different markets. But you, every time you pull a macroeconomic lever, what you end up with is impacting the market in Tasmania, in South Australia, in Western Australia. There's actually seen housing prices decline. Meanwhile, doing nothing? People can't no, afford to buy housing. No, Meanwhile, no, doing David, nothing and just doing pretending all. that supply is, is going to um, magically fix it. Uh, other is than the hearing it. stamp duty, does, do you, does the government need to, or governments need to look at that? That's a very well, good well, question, Andrew. Well, well, I think stamp duty is, is one of the things we need to be looking at. I mean, the current stamp duty concession for first time buyers in a, in a market like Sydney is, is almost irrelevant because the, the, the price setting is so low that nobody's buying property at that level. But we do need to look at, um, I think, inclusive zoning requiring affordable housing and social housing to be part of developments in Sydney. We got a small step in that direction from the Greater Sydney Commission recently, but uh, nothing like what we need. We actually do need, and, and it's a serious conversation, state and federal government need to sit down and work out a way of building more social housing, more affordable housing, and not simply relying upon the market and the invisible hand to magically fix it. Well, so, it has been a very fiery conversation oh, between the two of you this morning. I'm absolutely there. I'm sorry, Jason. Oh, Mary, no, Thank I'm you. sorry. <laughs> We're never going to get to the bottom of this, no. are we? Yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully we will at some will. stage. Yes, will. But uh, David Shoebridge, Jason Polinsky, thank, thank you, you very much for talking us through the news of the week. Thank you both. Now, political debate around the Safe Schools program has highlighted challenges for young people who have questions about their gender identity. The political focus has turned one transgender South Australian woman into an advocate for others who are struggling to overcome the same hurdles that she